Hello everyone, this is Samarian, and in this video we are going to be talking about the timer. Now the timer is a relatively simple tool in uh, the toy box, but it has a couple new cool features in 3.0, and it is also uh, one of the most commonly used toys because it's the only toy that you can actually hook up to the challenge maker to show results based on time, and that is usually done with this new time results connection uh, logic point. Now there's also a few, I wouldn't call them bugs and I wouldn't call them glitches, I would call them side effects of the timer that a lot of people have run into. There's been a lot of confusion over them, so we're going to talk about those as well. So if you run into that situation, perhaps you'll remember that it's the timer doing this to you. So under properties, there's not a lot to discuss here. Uh, there is target time, which is in seconds, and you can now input it uh, instead of just dragging the bar to the time, which could get very annoying. Now, the important thing to know is a timer can be anything 10 seconds or higher. You cannot go below 10 seconds with a timer. So I just put in 5, and it said that number is out of range. So the very least, or the very smallest number you can put into a timer is 10 seconds. Second display, or uh, second option, is visible display. If you turn it off, the player will never see the timer. If you turn it on, they will. Now, you just saw one of the interesting side effects of turning it off is it's a known glitch right now, and I believe they're working on it. But if you set a timer to visible display off, the next time you reload that level, the timer is going to start itself. So you have to figure out some way to make sure that after the level has started, you reset that timer before it fires off on something you didn't want it to fire off on yet. But I usually keep the visible display turned on because you can, with logic, turn off a timer when you need to. There's also countdown from target time. So if it's on, this timer is going to count down. If you turn it off, the counter is going to count up from zero to the time you've set. So we're going to leave it at countdown from target time just for now. Now the new logic connections, there are four outputs you can send from a timer. You can say when the timer is started, you can say when the time has run out or to whatever number you have set it to. You could send a signal if someone if the timer is paused and you can send a signal whenever it's reset. Now of course, I hate using buttons to do this, but button is the easiest way to show the inputs to a timer. So we're going to, I passed it, drop a button down to show you the inputs to a timer and show you some of the new features of the timer, which is in the inputs you can send to it. So start simply means the timer is going to start its countdown. Now, if the timer has been paused, which is the section option, if you pause the timer, it will pause the timer at whatever time it currently is on. So start will restart as well. So if you've paused the timer and you want it to start going again, you just send it a start signal. It won't start from scratch. It'll start from whatever point it was at. Reset will take out whatever time is in that timer and reset it back to the, the uh, default time, which if you're counting, up is zero. If you're counting down, it's whatever your timer is set to. Now hide and show timer display. I'm actually going to talk about the little, not glitch or bug, but the little side effect of the timer. And that is how a timer and text creators sometimes don't like each other. So I'm going to throw down a text creator just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'm going to set down this text creator, and a text creator defaults to the display of top. And that doesn't work so well when there's a timer on. So let's drop down another button. Hate buttons, but I use them a lot. So the buttons are great for testing your connections as you're building anyway. So I'm going to hook this button up so that it is going to display text one. Now, when you do that, if you haven't entered any text into the text creator, it will just say quite literally text one. 
And I'm going to hook this time this up to start the timer. And the timer is just going to count down from 10. So the counter is timing, counting down. And I'm going to activate my text, which does not pop up until the timer is done. Once the timer is done, text one. Now, why is it doing that? Well, the I don't know for sure why it's doing that, but what I have noticed is any text that has a box around it, like the top had a little outlined box around it, um, confirmation text, proposal text, top, middle, bottom, all have that box that is drawn around it. And I just switched it to confirmation text, text one, see the little box around it. I find that any text that has that box, if you look at the timer, it also has a box around it. So I believe that both of these toys use the same feature there so that the, the text will not display until the box has been released by the timer. Now, I'm not 100% sure that's exactly what's going on, but I am 100% sure that top, middle, bottom, proposal, and confirmation text will not display while a timer is running. So that is a issue that a lot of people have run into. Uh, a lot of people in 2.0 used to blame it on the challenge maker, but it was never the challenge maker's fault. It was the timer's fault. So I will show you right here. I'm going to instead display that text over player one. Now that text does not have a box over it. It will just show over my player and it's going to work just fine even with that timer running. As you can see, it worked beautifully. It, it did not wait until the timer was gone to display that. So any text that is connected actor, banner, locator, player based, those will all work just fine. It is simply the ones that get that box around them that will not work while the timer is going. So we have that. That is the issue I wanted to discuss and make sure people were aware of. Now there's multiple ways to get around that. Um, you could either switch to the text that will work or what you can do is in the inputs to a timer, I'll look at the one that's already going. The hide and show timer display. Hide will get rid of the timer display. And at that point, once you've gotten rid of that display, your text will work fine. It is only when that timer display is visible that your text won't work. So you could actually hide the text or the timer, then display your text. And then after the text is done, show the timer display again to bring the timer back up onto the screen. That is another workaround for that uh, that little, not, I keep wanting to call it a bug, the little side effect. Now here are the two new options in 3.0, add time and subtract time, which is, I think, absolutely fantastic. Because now you can add time to the timer or subtract time from the timer, which means you can add more features into a challenge where let's say the player collects a little collectible item on the ground and it gives them an extra five seconds to complete whatever task they're working on. And let's just drop a little gold challenge orb right here. And I'm going to tell it if you're broken or collected, add time, 15 seconds. So now again, I will start this timer. and my timer is counting down. And when I collect this, my timer has gone up 15 seconds, giving me more time. So I love these two new added options to the timer. I think they're uh, absolutely awesome. Um, but let's look at a few more features of the timer. Because the timer expired is an important uh, thing to understand on the timer that's really the main use of a timer is when the time expires what are you going to do do you end the challenge do you fail the challenge it all depends on what you're trying to do at the time so i'm just going to hook up the timer expired to that fireworks so now that's interesting Hmm. 
I didn't realize it was going to do that. That's an interesting side effect. Ever since I picked up that collectible, the timer is now resetting to a time of 25 seconds. Very interesting. Let's see if we can't fix it. I haven't run into that issue before, so... Let's see if a complete reset of that timer will fix it back to its 10 seconds that it's actually programmed to. Now reset clears the timer, should erase all the numbers from it, and it even gets rid of the display. And it did set it back to its original 10 seconds. So that's an interesting little feature we just found. So, let's see, we talked about adding time, we talked about subtracting time, we talked about the text creator and its issues with the timer. We talked about timer working with a challenge maker and adding and subtracting time. So I think that's all I really wanted to cover in this tutorial. Sorry if I seem a little scatterbrained today. But again, this has been Samirian and this has been a video on the Timer Creative Toy. I hope this has been useful to you and have yourselves all a wonderful day.